Welcome back to our series of status examples. I'm Jim Kearns, and uh, welcome to Lawrence Tech in sunny Southfield, Michigan. Beautiful day outside. It's actually above zero Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, I want to take just a moment to show how a couple is a free vector that seems to confuse students. So we'll, we'll look at that carefully. Uh, and what that means is we can move a couple around and basically apply it anywhere once we found it. Then we'll resolve all of the couples shown on that diagram to the left there. And we'll use different methods. We'll do uh, the perpendicular distance. We'll re put it into Cartesian notation and find the distances. And we'll do a cross product just to see the different methods and then sum them up to get the total moment or the total moment from the couples on that. Now, recall that a couple results when you have a pair of forces that are parallel, non-collinear, and opposite direction, equal magnitude. So by inspection, we can see that there's no net force in either the x or the y direction, and obviously not in the z direction. But we do have a moment from each one. So let's pick an arbitrary point. We'll call it point O. We'll put it over here on the left. And let's find the moment due to each of those forces. We'll call those F, F1 and F2. Now I need the distance from the, our origin here to, to those points. So I'll draw a position vector from O to F1. I'll call this R1. And rather than drawing on top of that, I'll just continue on with the second position vector from F1 to F2, and we'll call that R2, okay? So the sum of my moments is equal to R1 times F, and that is clockwise, so that's a negative, and plus the moment of, we'll just add the vectors, R1 plus R2 times F, and that is counterclockwise, so that's positive. So if I put those together and solve for F, I get that sum of the moments is equal to uh, negative R1 plus R1 plus R2 times F. And of course, the negative R1, the plus R1 are left, across, cancel each other out. So I'm left with R2 times F, okay? And that's my moment. And you'll notice that no matter where I put this origin, I can move it up, up and down. I can move it right and left. I can put the origin, my point O, anywhere. And I still end up with the moment being simply R2 times f, you know, the vector from f1 to f2 is our position vector times the magnitude of that uh, the couple you went to, f, and that's it. It doesn't matter where I place the origin, doesn't matter at what point I calculate that um, moment about. So that's why it's a free vector, because I can move I can move the point at which that couple is applied anywhere on the page, up, down, right, left. So. I hope that clears up any confusion about why we consider a, um, a couple to be a free vector that you can apply anywhere. So let's start working on the vectors. I'm going to start with vector B. Um, we see from the picture above the vector B has a magnitude of 10 newtons and you know one end is 5 meters from the end of the block and the other is 1.5 meters. So I've got uh, basically um, 3.5 meters between them. And let's work out what the moment needs to be. So we can say that moment B equals our 10 meters, no, not our 10 newtons, excuse me, times the 3.5 meters. And that gives us a moment of 335 newton meters. And that's going to be uh, counterclockwise or positive or a plus z. So it'll be coming out the page of us at the page, coming out of the page at us in the z direction. Uh, moving to 
and, uh, moment for A, which is in blue, one at each end of that, that uh, thing, we can say that the, uh, well, there's a couple ways we could do it, but we're going to use Cartesian notation for this one rather than trying to figure out the perpendicular distance, uh, which we could do. We could use, um, you know, cosines and things to figure out what the distance is and work it out. But um, we'll, we'll use Cartesian notation. So I'm going to break it down into the X and Y components. So I'm going to have a, um, a Y component for A, and I'm going to have an X component for A on each end. And then we can figure out the moment for each of those um, we can say that AX equals minus 5, because it's pointing to the left. I'm looking at the right-hand version of the uh, moment. Minus 5 times a cosine of 15 degrees, and that's equal to negative 4.83 newtons. And AY is equal to that it's 5, um, and that's positive y direction. 5 times the sine of 15 degrees, and that is equal to 1.29 newtons. So looking at the x component, I have my, the 4.83 newtons is the force. The distance between the two x components, if I were to extend those, and let me draw those here. You know, the difference between that line and this line is one meter. Okay. Given the, the distance of one meter in that force, my moment in the x direction from the a vector is going to be equal to that one meter times the 4.83. And actually, it's negative, but that's okay. And we get a... Um, Counter -clock or clockwise rotation because the top force is pushing the right, bottom force is pushing the left. So that's clockwise. So that gives us a moment that is a negative, negative 4.83 newton meters. Okay. And MAY in the y direction equals the, um, we have a distance of five meters one into the other. 5 times the magnitude of 1.29 equals um, 9.15. And that is counterclockwise, so that's a positive moment, Newton meters. And that vector will be pointing in the positive z direction if we were to put in vector form. So let's, let's look at c now. And we'll do this in the cross product form, OK? Um, so the first thing I want to do is write the C vector in a Cartesian format. So my C vector, I'll put the vector signs on afterwards, equals 12 times a cosine of 15 of 40 um, times I plus 12 times the sine of 30 times j plus it's two-dimensional, so there's zero times k. And that's our, our vector c there. Our, our vector in this case is going to be equal to 1i plus 0k plus 0k because they're one meter apart in the x direction. They're aligned horizontally. So there's no y component and there's no k component. And to calculate the, um, the cross product, I'm going to say that my moment um, for c is equal to the r vector for c times the um, cross f of c. Okay. And give me just a moment. We want to calculate our moment m as r crossed f, and that's equal to the um, we can calculate that by determining by evaluating the determinant of i, j, k, 
and our r vector here we'll put in as um, the r vector was one zero zero. And our F vector we determined was, let's see, 12 times the cosine of 30 degrees I, which comes to 10.39. And J was uh, 12 times the sine of 30, which is 6. And K was 0. So we can evaluate that determinant. And what we end up with is that our uh, moment for vector C is equal to, um, well, if I look at it here, if I look at the I component, um, I'm going to do the determinant of the 0, the 0 minus 0 times 6, so that's going to be 0. The J component, um, 1 times 0 minus 0 times 10.39, those are both 0. The K component is 1 times 6 minus 0 times 10.39. So that's just going to be 6k. We we'll end up with 0i plus 0j plus 6k as my uh, component there. And then I can just add all three of those couples together. And it doesn't matter that they're applied at different places on that because we defined the, the, the couple as a free vector so that I can say that the, the sum of my moment total, and these are all about the z-axis because they're all, it's a two-dimensional problem here, the moment about the z-axis is equal to 35 newton meters from vector b um, minus 4.8 3 newton meters from the x component of A plus 9.15 newton meters from the y component of A and 6 newton meters from the k component, or the k component, yeah, from the k component of, of moment C. And that's equal to, if I did the math all correctly here, 45.82 newton meters. So that should, uh, I think that covers that. It's, it's straightforward once you get the hang of it and once you get past this concept that the free vector and the idea you can slide it around everywhere, um, that, that makes it reasonably straightforward. Uh, we covered three different methods for, for calculating these. If there's a completely three-dimensional problem, obviously the um, using the cross product is the simpler way to do it, but uh, I wanted to show them all for completeness. I hope that helped you out some. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned.